Hi everyone, I'm Richard. So, PlayStation 4.5, PlayStation 4K, what's it all about? You might have heard the rumours, just three years after the launch of the original PS4, we understand that Sony is working on a new version of the machine, designed mostly with 4K Ultra HD TVs in mind, but potentially with benefits for PlayStation VR 2. All of which sounds a bit odd. After all, PlayStation 4 is a massive success for Sony and a major factor in restoring its fortunes. In fact, it's been so successful that Sony itself can't entirely account for its mammoth sales. Why put its continuing success in jeopardy by releasing a new version? Now, to be honest, I'm not entirely clear as to why Sony is doing this, but We've broken some pretty big Sony stories in the past. The original PS4 specs, the system RAM allocation, the PS2 emulator, the PSVR external processor box, the list goes on. So I do know from sources that prototype hardware does exist in Sony's HQ. Now, how that translates into a final retail product remains to be seen. But as for reports that dev kits have gone out, well, I've not yet encountered a developer who has one. Indeed, some well-placed people within Sony I've spoken to actually knew nothing about it until the initial leak, all of which suggests that either the upgrade isn't that palpable or perhaps more likely we're a long way off from release. Based on the meagre information we do have available, what do we know about the hardware? Well, a key idea here is to support 4K TVs, which are becoming much cheaper now, and they are starting to sell in volume. Now, in theory, the standard PlayStation 4 can output 4K at 30 Hertz. It could run movies and 30 FPS games, but it won't be able to run the upcoming 4K Blu-rays as it has no HDMI 2.0 or HDCP 2.2 support. You can't even run Netflix 4K and other UHD content on the standard model. None of this is particularly good for a games machine that's supposed to double as a media center. In theory, a potential PS4K could see the existing processor redesigned with 4K capable media blocks, which we know that AMD has produced for its new Polaris PC technology. And we would expect a new PS4K to feature the new UHD Blu-ray drive too. Sony will be working with AMD in redesigning the processor anyway. New 14 nanometer and 16 nanometer chip fabrication technology is coming along that makes it possible to shrink the existing processor, making it smaller, more power efficient and cheaper to produce, in the medium term at least. Limited enhancements for 4K media could be added to the chip in the redesign process. But what's exciting here is the alternative, using the new technology to make a much more powerful chip instead. And on paper, the possibilities are enticing the new technology can see a 2x boost to transistor density on the same area of silicon. So basically, more Radeon graphics hardware can be crammed onto the chip, making a tangible improvement to gaming performance possible. And that's similar to the rumor recently posted on the NeoGAF forum, which suggests a 2x performance increase from the GPU compared to the standard PS4. But there are reasons to be wary here. First of all, the GPU in the current PlayStation 4 is actually the most powerful component in the current model. In fact, there's good evidence to believe that it's being constrained by the relatively light Jaguar processor cores that surround it. And crucially, memory bandwidth, well, that has got to be shared with the CPU. Look at any Radeon PC graphics card. The more compute units they have, the more powerful they are, the faster the memory attached to them and the wider the memory bus, the interface that connects the processor cores to the RAM. Now, PlayStation 4 has a 256-bit interface, while more capable AMD cards have 384-bit and even 512-bit equivalents. The bottom line is that a big boost to GPU performance will require a substantial boost to the PS4's current memory setup, but adding that wider interface could be troublesome. The technologies to boost bandwidth are available, but GDDR5X, a next-gen version of the existing technology found in PS4, well, that's kind of unproven right now, while HBM, high bandwidth memory found in AMD's top-end Fury X, that's just too expensive for a console, and right now it's limited to four gigs. There's also the question of compatibility between models. A 2X GPU boost for a PS4K would really benefit from access to AMD's new upcoming Polaris PC technology, designed specifically for the new 14 nanometer process. But 
PS4K must be 100% compatible with the existing PlayStation 4 to be viable. Part of the console's success has been down to the developer's ability to talk directly to the metal. The question is, to what extent the new AMD tech that's coming out later this year is compatible with the old when it's addressed so directly? Perhaps a safer option would be to use an existing off-the-shelf GPU design from the same family. So this is the Radeon R9 270X. PlayStation 4 essentially uses a slightly cut down version of the exact same GPU technology. And here's the R9 280X from the same family. 60% more compute units there. Pair that with an overclock and you could conceivably create a 2x more powerful PS4K GPU. But again, well, memory bandwidth, that would be my concern there. Assuming that this level of power can be delivered, is it enough to power 4K gaming? Well, native 4K is four times the pixel count of standard Full HD 1080p. 2x GPU boost isn't going to cut it on anything other than the most basic looking games. Assuming that PS4K does deliver enhanced gaming hardware, we should expect to see those resources deployed, perhaps in better looking games with more stable performance, as opposed to native 4K gameplay. And when you look at the state of more visually ambitious games like Final Fantasy XV, well, maybe there is a case for it. It could make a real difference there, ironing out the lackluster image quality and stabilizing wobbly frame rates. I would also expect Sony to take advantage of the features found in 4K displays that aren't necessarily about resolution. For example, a wider color gamut and high dynamic range, well, they're real game changers for display technology. Now, HDR is pretty much standard in most games these days, but it does get downsampled to standard range on existing Full HD screens. So there is potential there. Combine that with some of the upscaling technologies we've seen recently and 4K, well, it might not be 4K as such, but it could still look impressive. Again, we do know that support for these technologies is available in AMD's most recent video blocks. There may also be some titles that could potentially run at 60fps on PS4K while operating at the standard 30 on the existing PS4. However, again, I would urge some caution here. Unless the CPU gets a big boost, which I kind of feel is unlikely, only certain games could actually deliver a 2x performance boost. I guess for many, the question is whether a mid-generation upgrade is really needed. Check out this footage of Uncharted 4. I mean, it looks phenomenal. In technological terms, surely this demonstrates that there's much more life in the current generation, that there are still boundaries to push. But again, Naughty Dog initially talked about a 1080p60 game in the initial stages of development. Single player is actually 1080p30 in the final game, while the 60fps multiplayer sees a resolution drop to 900p. There has always been perhaps the sense that PlayStation 4 and Xbox One weren't quite as revolutionary in terms of their feature set compared to their predecessors. I guess the thing is that developers have worked with what they were given and still handed in some fantastic results. The thing is that Sony cannot leave its enormous PS4 user base behind. Logically, I would expect PlayStation 4K games to be enhanced versions of PS4 titles, which sort of puts a ceiling on the level of ambition you can expect from a more powerful upgrade. But my concern is that it may also pave the way for suboptimal gameplay on older hardware. And that's a real danger when the user base is split like this. And to a certain extent, it's something we've already seen with Nintendo's new 3DS. Here's the recently released Hyrule Warriors. 20 FPS on the old 3DS, 30 FPS on the new one. Yeah, it's a game changer. I really wouldn't want to play that one on older hardware. So while we're aware of PS4K prototypes and various developer chit chat, for us, as journalists, getting the full lowdown on the PS4K hardware spec is the priority right now. We can be pretty much certain that AMD is handling the processor and we know what technologies it has available to work with. But cramming all of them into a single processor and achieving a good balance between CPU, GPU and memory, that's the challenge Sony faces in providing a tangible upgrade that can make a difference, while at the same time maintaining full compatibility with the existing PlayStation 4. And of course, it remains to be seen whether there's an audience for an iterative increase in processor power like this, as opposed to a true generational leap further on down the road. That, well, that's going to be down to you. So, do let us know what you think about this in the comments below, but that's all I've got for you for now. Please like and subscribe to support what we do here at Digital Foundry, and I'll see you soon.